Now, training. Now, let me just read this from the article so I don't so I don't get too far afield here. Training is the process of accumulating, and I'm using that word very, very specifically, accumulating a specific physiological adaptation or adaptations necessary for improved performance in an athletic event. These adaptations depend entirely upon the physical nature of the performance in question. And that should be obvious. A weightlifting event requires a different set of physiologic adaptations than a 26.2 marathon, right? They're, those two examples are on the opposite end of the adaptation spectrum, right? But nonetheless, the process for preparing for them is the same. You accumulate the adaptations that best enable you to perform in that event over a long period of time of training, okay? Now, that that uh, that linear axis is is real useful to to think about on the one hand you have a strength adaptation on the other hand you have an endurance adaptation all right these two types of adaptations are completely different physiologic events all right when you adapt to an endurance uh, environment you adapt to an endurance stress where you have to keep going and keep generating a series of sub maximal contractions over a long period of time the adaptations that enable that to take place are largely metabolic in other words they involve changes in the tissues that are already there Whereas a strength adaptation requires that you grow bigger muscles and denser and bigger bones and stronger and thicker connective tissues in order to execute that performance at a higher level. Uh, now, there are some genetic predispositions involved in 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 this i mean a guy with a 38 inch vertical who's explosive and fast does not typically choose to compete in marathons because he's better at other things a guy with a 12 inch vertical jump who weighs 130 pounds at a height of five seven and is real good at not feeling pain is going to be genetically predisposed to running at a long distance so the two different types of competitive performances are selected for kind of in advance on the basis of genetics right but when we decide we're going to go run a marathon and do well in the marathon do better in this next one than we did the previous one uh, then at that point we're doing things to improve our endurance performance now one of the most overlooked aspects of endurance performance for these types of athletes is strength training all right yeah i think that the marathon competitors ought to train for strength now when i say train for strength i don't mean change sports i don't mean that marathon athletes need a three times body weight squat that's not what i'm saying it's not what i've ever said what I've said is that it would benefit a marathon competitor to have a squat that is heavier than no squat at all and that 
that person squatting his own body weight on the bar for a set of five is not represent a strength specialization. What it what it would do is injury proof the guy's feet and legs and back and hips. And that would be the purpose for for engaging in this kind of strength training. And it this doesn't mean that that uh, strength training needs to become a major part of a marathon athlete's training program. I certainly haven't ever said that. But the guy that's not very strong at all that's competing in a, in a physical event needs to be stronger.